Welcome to Friday, everybody. It has been a wet one this afternoon. Still got some showers up here toward Port Huron. We get a break for now, but more rain is to our west. Storms continue to move through, and I've got your weather forecast on the way. I want you to take a look at this. Do you know what this is? It was invented almost 500 years ago. I'm going to take you to a new exhibit with the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. My gosh, you'll see the vision he had. A bombshell revelation involving possible secret recordings of President Trump talking about payments to a former Playboy model before the 2016 election. And we are now learning the full extent of that tragic duck boat accident in Branson, Missouri. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. Time now for our first look at the forecast. Rain has moved in, and the question is how long is it going to stay? Welcome to your Friday. Well, we are looking at some of the rain moving away, but this is only the first wave that moved through earlier this afternoon, including in downtown Detroit. We still have some leftover moderate to heavy shower activity here in uh, southern uh, Lake Huron, right around the Port Huron area. These heavier showers here in Sanilac County with a few lightning strikes that have occurred within the last 15 to 30 minutes. Now you can see the gap in between the first wave and the second wave that moves through. And these showers and storms, they look really nasty, especially farther to our south. In fact, in southwest Michigan, parts of Indiana, a tornado watch that expires at 6 p.m. in just a couple of hours this evening. Not here in Detroit and southeast Michigan. We have no watches, no warnings as of yet. The uh, heaviest portion of the shower and thunderstorm activity here in the southern branch. This is a look at northeastern Ohio around Fort Wayne. Much of this moving almost due east in the portions of Ohio. But as you can see here in southwest Michigan, some showers and storms that have diminished somewhat over the past few hours, but still headed in our direction. I think closer to the Ohio border, that's where we might have some of those stronger storms start to enter Lenaway County closer to 6 p.m. We'll talk more about this for this evening, what it means for our baseball game. But in the meantime, download the local forecasters app. It is the best thing to have in your pocket in the palm of your hand while you are on the go this evening and tonight. You can monitor for live radar, get interactive weather alerts and our latest forecast right in the palm of your hand. Local forecasters app. Download it now. It's free. Search WDIV in your app store. Well, there is new audio from the Detroit plane crash last month of a 911 call made after the crash. Take a listen. How many people are in, inside the plane are hurt? Do you know? I'm not in the. I, all oh, of them is hurt. In the plane, plane are hurt. How many are hurt? All of them. The plane broke in half and is on fire. You'll remember a couple from Texas was killed and a teenage passenger escaped after the single engine plane crash on June 24th. The investigation into the crash still ongoing. However, the NTSB suspects landing gear problems and a low fuel emergency. A Dearborn native has been arrested who is believed to have been fighting for the Islamic State. Syrian Democratic forces got him this month as he was trying to escape the Middle Euphrates River Valley. He is one of only a handful of Americans to be apprehended on the battlefield. After his arrest, he was taken to a holding facility where he was identified by another detainee. Authorities have put plans in motion to send him to the United States for prosecution. The water is now testing clean, but families in Flint still need help to recover from the crisis. That's why some members of Crom Congress are there today, and so is our Help Me Hank. Hank. Karen, a very big day here in Flint as top political leaders had an opportunity to see the progress being made, pipes being replaced in neighborhoods, and also a unique moment when they had the chance to talk with families affected by the Flint water crisis, talk with them one on one. I also asked them about Elon Musk and his plan to make a big financial difference to help the city of Flint. Do they buy it? We're live here in Flint beginning at five. I'm consumer investigator Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. All right, thank you, Hank. The closure planned on I-696 this weekend has been canceled. The closure was planned on eastbound I-696 from the Lodge and Telegraph to I-75. Also westbound I-696 from Telegraph to 275. But the closures have now been canceled due to the weather. Concrete and paving work just can't be done in the rain. However, the closure is expected to be rescheduled for next weekend, so make sure to take note. You can find more information on all the weekend road construction in Metro Detroit on our website. Click on Detroit.com. 
We are learning more about the terrible duck boat accident in southwestern Missouri that killed 17 people. Devin Skillian is in the newsroom this afternoon following the very latest. Devin. Well, Karen, a lot of people who witnessed this tragedy say Tabletop Lake in Branson seemed very calm, but then the weather took a sudden turn and the sky became very dark. The waves picked up and then this is what happened. will be a duck that has capsized. We have approximately 30 individuals in the water. In fact, there were 31 people on board. All of them are now accounted for, but just 14 survivors. The 17 who died range in age from 1 to 70. Some people who were on another boat nearby jumped into the water and tried to help. What I understand, um, I had a Stone County deputy that was on the Branson Bell doing off-duty security. Um, he was involved in the rescue. There was employees of the Branson Bell that jumped in and helped with rescue. And it was even passengers that was getting on the Branson Bell assisted in rescuing people. The Branson Bell, another big, much larger uh, boat that uh, makes its way around tabletop. The NTSB was expected to arrive today to conduct their investigation. Now, the National Weather Service did issue a number of severe weather warnings for Branson uh, just in the hours before the accident. Those included the severe thunderstorm watch, indicating the possibility of winds that could get up to 70 miles an hour, followed by a severe thunderstorm. Uh, that was a severe thunderstorm warning that came about a half hour before uh, this happened. So there's still the question, though, of whether there were enough life jackets on board and who was wearing them at the time. The sheriff says he cannot yet answer that question. Terrible situation in a very busy tourist town oh, in Branson, Missouri. Back such to you, Karen. a tragedy. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Devin. Mm -hmm. First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines around the world this Friday afternoon. We begin right here in the U.S., where a New York Times report says President Trump's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, secretly recorded Trump discussing a payoff to former Playboy model Karen McDougal during the 2016 campaign. The report says the FBI seized that recording during a raid on Cohen's office in New York City. That happened back on April 9th. Trump's current lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, says while Trump talked about making payments with Cohen on that recording, the payment to McDougal was never made. An illness linked to McDonald's salads has now reached 10 states. 163 people have been sickened, including three people that were hospitalized. The FDA says the problem is caused by a parasite that's transmitted in foods contaminated with fecal matter. McDonald's has voluntarily stopped selling salads in 14 states, including Michigan, until they are able to switch to a new lettuce mix supplier. Finally, the city of Charlotte will be hosting its second major party convention in a decade. The Republican National Committee voted unanimously to make Charlotte its host city in 2020. In 2012, Charlotte hosted the Democratic National Convention. North Carolina is viewed as an important swing state in the next presidential election. Well, it is an extraordinary look into the mind of a genius. The traveling exhibit Da Vinci's Machines and Robotics opens this weekend at Cranbrook, and it is something to behold. So we send Paula Tutman out for a first look. So obviously these are reproductions, but they're crafted from the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. The actual exhibit opens Saturday at the Cranbrook Institute of Science, and indeed, yes, it is part art exhibit, part incredible walk through imagination. A lot of work is being done to get the exhibit ready. Interestingly enough, many of the drawings are guiding the way. Exhibit's constructor, Gwen Lindsay, goes up on a scissors lift to set a simple spotlight. So I do a lot of atmospheric work, and as you can see at the moment, lighting in the Da Vinci Machines and Robots exhibit. So I work with systems where you got to get things up in the air and you don't want to like haul them up there because they're horribly heavy. And he's got a whole lot of things in here with those. A lot of it's not like he did it first, but a lot of it's he did it better. The very machinery she is using would not be possible were it not for the genius of Leonardo Da Vinci. But one of the little things over here is essentially a, a floodlight arrangement. You can see even the sign right there says floodlight. If you added electricity to it, that is essentially what Gwen was hanging from the ceiling. He took the idea of a bearing and put a ring around it. So it provided a better track for the bearing system. Bearings get used everywhere. Um, her scissors lift uh, is on wheels and the wheels have bearings inside. 60 of Da Vinci's drawings are brought to life in an interactive, yes, you can touch it exhibit. And each hand that touches the construction of that exhibit, just the construction so you can experience it, 
can feel the brilliance of the man. I mean, everybody knows Leonardo da Vinci. Everybody immediately what jumps into their head is the Mona Lisa, which is the most famous piece of art probably in the world. But da Vinci was everything. He was a master painter, but he was an engineer. He was an architect. Did you go to the gym today? Is this little machine right here, which is basically like your um, gym today. Da Vinci saw it 500 years ago. Here you go. You know, I'm now working my legs. Now I'm working out of these uh, butterflies or whatever, so. What I think is so interesting about this is the way that he would take a problem and he would look at it and investigate it and play around with it, try to come up with something, and then maybe it wouldn't work. But he didn't leave it alone. He would just sort of step back from it take a couple breaths, and then he would come around and look at it from a different angle. He thought about flight and was considered by many a madman. He thought about robots long before robotics. He was simply a master. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Thank you so much, Paula. By the way, the exhibit does open to the public tomorrow. Tickets are $8 for adults and only 6 bucks for children and seniors. If you can, check it out. Ahead, first at four, how would you like to work four days a week and get paid for five? One company decided to give that a try, and when you hear how it went, oh, you may want to be talking to your boss in the coming days. Plus, a once popular birth control option is going away, and not for the reasons many thought it would. That's next.